It's a rare Wednesday game for the Utah Hockey Club as they look to bounce back from a tough loss against the San Jose Sharks. Can they do it? Robin and I preview that up next and talk about the lessons from that Sharks game. You are Locked On Utah Hockey Club, your daily podcast on the Utah Hockey Club, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Thanks for joining us once again, everybody. I'm former NHL voice Tom Callahan and joined, as always, by Robin Leonio, longtime team correspondent. And I'll tell you what, between the two of us, Robin's forgotten more about hockey than I know or something like that. Uh, <laughs> we love talking about the Utah Hockey Club, and we appreciate you making us your first listen every single day. Today's episode brought to you by FanDuel. You can start the season with a big return on FanDuel. New customers can place a $5 bet, and you'll get started with $150 in bonus bets if you win your first $5 bet. Visit FanDuel.com to get started. And we're getting started, Robin, right into talking about this game a Wednesday matchup, which doesn't happen too often on the calendar because typically you see NHL teams play Tuesday, Thursday, Saturday. But this week, Utah Hockey Club plays Monday, Wednesday, so it's a little different than normal. But uh, this is the last chance to make something good at home against Calgary before they go out on the road for a, a four-game swing away, and it's not an easy swing. So Calgary's off to a surprising start, you know, yeah, there's a lot going on here right now. Plenty of storylines to talk about. Oh, certainly. This is definitely a big game to come up. Um, for the, a lot of the mentions, a lot of the uh, a lot of the reasons that you just mentioned, uh, and and I think again, as we as I talked about on on Tuesday's episode after after the loss to the Sharks, is that is a brutal loss, and I think everyone's talked about it. Everyone. Um, and we're going we're probably gonna even dive a little bit more into it as we go through this show. And like that, that loss, I think, is a statement to all right, we need to turn this around. That's you got to figure out what's happening and fix all this because that is a loss that should not have happened. Yeah, it's a, it's a tough one, it really is. And you now you're coming in against a Calgary Flames team that. I think a lot of people thought was going to be essentially flip flop them of the Edmonton Oilers. No one expected Calgary to get off to a good start, but they have, and they're playing well. Uh, they found a way to put pucks in the net. More importantly, they found a way to keep them out of their own net. So the flames off to a good start. They're going to be a tough test here on Wednesday for a team looking to bounce back. Here's what concerns me, Robin, and, and we'll just get to this right away. This is twice in three games now. Andre Torney has not liked his team's performance. Uh, the Avalanche game was an embarrassing flop of a game for the team, and Torney was forthcoming in his comments about it and basically said that was a bad, horrible thing that needs to never happen again. This team didn't show up. We need to show up next time. So they did against the Kings. Still lost, but better game. And... For 55-ish minutes against the Sharks, they did what they were supposed to do. They had a 4-1 lead and deserved to get there, I think. Yeah. But just took a five-minute nap, and all of a sudden the Sharks tied up, and, and they just didn't put the Sharks away when they easily could have. And again, now we're talking about, no, we don't want to be that team. We certainly don't want to be the team in the last five minutes, but we want to be better than that. Okay, well, now we're talking about maybe some some issues of heart and character and identity early in this season. So this is not just about the on-ice product. I think this is about the belief in the dressing room. This is about the leadership group stepping up and saying, look, okay, we can't replay those games, but we need to do better, and it needs to start now. And I think in practice on Tuesday... It was better. The mood was up. Guys had, you know, some energy. They were out there. They were there was jump. But um, is that going to translate to the game on Wednesday now? I mean i I hope that I, I hope that that bounce back is what they is how it translates. They need something to get back on track, right? And 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 you mentioned it. This is the last opportunity before they get back on the road for a pretty brutal stretch. Like they need something to. M motivate themselves back and a win always is going to do that oh sure 
Sure. Win would be great because as you mentioned, just in case you're wondering the stretch Robin's talking about four away from home, it goes Vegas, Winnipeg, St. Louis, Nashville. So that's not an easy stretch away from home. And this is, here's the other thing, Rob, and we talk about the Delta center and about making that a tough place to play. And you know, the crowd being loud and in it and all that. And, the last five minutes of that game against the Sharks, like Your it got drop. quieter and quieter and quieter. <laughs> yeah, because they were everyone was everyone was just stunned. They didn't know how to respond to that, and 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 uh, honestly, I don't blame I don't blame the fans there for that for what happened there. Um, but I feel like if 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 if, if we're, we're going to get back into a in, into that win mentality. I'd like to see the Delta Center, you know, keep that going. Like, yeah, sure, you know, it that you you they might see a stretch like that, but stay loud. Let them show them that support. You know, it's it's tough, right? Because the first one goes in, it goes to four two, and you think, all right, they got their one, but they got it early. It is that uh, garbage time. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Exactly. They pulled the goalie. Whatever. Okay. For what's the difference between four one and four two? Nothing. Um. But the difference between four two and four three was uh oh, and then all of a sudden it's four four, and that was the, it, the feeling of inevitability had kind of crept over the crowd, and it, I almost felt it, Robin, that even heading into the OT, even though Utah started with a possession, there was still that shadow there. And I don't think anybody really ever fully quite recovered their energy from that. That's a tough situation. But again, I talk about winning teams get past those moments. So to me, Wednesday, what's most important for me is the start. And it is absolutely the start. That first five to 10 minutes of that first period, this team needs to come out guns blazing they need to come out firing on all cylinders, whatever cliche you want to throw out there. I want to see hits. I want to see passion. I want to see energy. And I want to see them go after the puck and make plays. Oh, ab- absolutely. And I think we will we will see it. We will see, we will see that going into this game uh, with, 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 with an important stretch. We're going to uh, discuss the, all that and kind of go into some of the important aspects that we want to see from Utah. Um, maybe get to some of the extra lessons learned from from Monday's loss, we're going to get to the picks of the game from uh, you know from Fanduel. We are going to even discuss a little bit of PWHL, as you can see if you're looking on watching on YouTube. We have a little teaser there. You might be wondering what we're going to talk about. We'll get to all of that right after this. Today's episode is brought to you by Prize Picks. Prize Picks is the best place to get real money sports action. With over 10 million members and billions of dollars in awarded winnings, Prize Picks has made daily fantasy sports accessible to all. You just pick more or less on at least two players for a shot to win up to 100 times your cash. Run your game all season long on Prize Picks. Prize puts its members first, so all withdrawals are fast, safe, and secure. When Prize Picks hits, I can get my money in as quick as 15 minutes. And it also, it's really the only place that they, to get real money, daily fantasy platform, an injury insurance policy. So your lineup stays in place even if one of your players gets injured. So if your player leaves in the first half and doesn't return, Price Picks keeps your lineup active. It just reboots that lineup from a six pick lineup to a five pick lineup to make sure that you're still getting a good chance at getting a win. Get it. Go ahead and check it out yourself. Download the app and use the code Locked On NHL and get fifty dollars instantly after you place your first five dollar lineup. Once again, you don't even need to win to get that fifty dollars. You'll get it instantly. Just once again, use the promo code Locked On NHL. L O C K E D O N N H L. You get fifty dollars instantly after you place your first five dollar lineup. Prize picks. Run your game. So let's keep things going, Tom. Let's let let's get more into this game. Utah Hockey Club versus Calgary Flames, the uh, final home game for a uh, a four game stretch on the road. Uh, let's get to some keys to the game. What are some of the things you're watching for uh, 
going into this game for Utah, some very important things that should be addressed and to make sure that they get the win tonight. Well, I think the start was the first one I threw out there. And to me, that is the biggest one. That's the most important thing. They really need to figure out how to get out there with energy, sustain the energy. As we saw, a good start against the Sharks didn't equal a win. So on top of the start being critical for Utah Hockey Club, 60 minutes of hockey, a sustained effort, a and look, you might have a bad shift or two. Everybody does. It's a long game. 60 minutes is a long time. Yeah. But Robin, I need to see them finish this off. Whether they're trailing or leading, I need 60 minutes of effort. It doesn't matter to me what the score is. I, I, I'm serious. I don't care if they lose. I don't care if they win. I need 60 minutes of effort. That is going to be so important to me. Six, you know, one, I, and I think that is kind of the same thought process I'm having. And it goes back to a lot of the issues I've had with this team in the year, years past from, you know, the last season in Arizona, even the previous season in Arizona and saying, I could, this team needs a 60 minute game, needs a 60 minute game, but they never gave it to me. Uh, I'm like, I, it, it frustrated me. And, and I hope, I would hope that after a loss, like they experienced San Jose, they realized, oh, I, that's what, that we, we need to give it our all from start to finish from the, uh, from the beginning with, from the puck drop to the final horn, make sure you give it your best effort because that can happen. Um, so how I think, yeah, a 60 minute game is crucial in a game like this one. Yeah, and right now the Flames are reeling a little bit. They start a 5 0 1. It was their best start since they relocated the franchise from Atlanta. That goes all the way back to the 80 81 season. So that unto itself was impressive for a team that many, including me, did not think was a playoff team. Since then, though, they've lost three in a row in regulation. They got shut out by Vegas. Uh, didn't look all that good. So the Flames are cooling off, if you'll pardon the pun. Uh, and Utah Hockey Club needs to continue to throw water on that fire. You know, they can smother the flames. Uh, they can really continue their downward trend. That's why this game is also interesting to me is because it is two teams that are on mini skids. Theirs is three. Ours is four. I'm really interested to see when these two teams clash with one another, what gives, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. I, I'm And especially at being at home. Yeah. If this was a road game, I'd expect the Flames to have that bit of an edge. But at Delta Center, I expect that the UHC should have the edge competitively, uh, energetically. They're not traveling, although it's not a huge trip from Vegas to, to Salt Lake. Still, Calgary's on the road. They're not sleeping in their own beds, right? So I just, to me, I really look at this game and I think to myself, you know what, Utah... This is an important one for you against a Flames team that is slowing down. And they weren't projected to be a playoff team, but neither was Utah, and they had a hot start. Are they? Are these two teams regressing to the mean? Are they going back into what we really expected them to be in the beginning? Or is this just a mirage? And I think this is a critical game for both of these teams, so I expect a fight. I think this is mm -hmm. going to be an absolute battle. I Honestly, I think so too, which is I think... One thing that I, I was reading in an article and they were talking about how both these teams have been pretty poor on the shot clap, the, the, the shot counts, right? They've they haven't, they, they haven't really been getting quality shots out. Uh, so I think that is another thing I want to add in as a key, Tom, is I think getting the shots on and, um, and more specifically, the, I think I, I, I think you said it earlier this in, in the season, Tom, to get the 30 shots yeah yeah i mean if you if you league averages you're going to score on nine out of ten so if you get to 30 you should get to three goals three wins a lot of games in the nhl it's the race to three and although with utah earlier in the season it was the race to four five and six but which also rob and that that begs the question right where did the scoring go on this team it's kind of dried up a bit until that sharks game they were Having trouble putting the puck in the net. It yeah they they were and 
so what they did in San Jose and that specific, more specifically in that, you know, in that earlier bit of that game where they got those four goals is look at what they did and see if you can get a little bit more of uh, like do that and a little bit more because Matias Michelli getting two goals against San Jose was huge. That was a great opportunity. Dylan Gunther getting back on the scoring sheet. Like that's, you want more of that. Let's see how long they can keep that up. So you you bring up a couple of interesting things here. First of all, let's talk about Dylan Gunther. Great start to the season. Obviously had the boost off signing that big deal. Then disappeared for what several games. I think what was six maybe. Yeah. Um, and all of a sudden was just gone off the radar. And now back. Scores in the Sharks game. Good to see. But to me... In the meantime, I never thought Dylan Gunther was the answer and the goal-scoring leader on this team this year. And we talked about this before. That that top six, the scoring is spread out. There's a lot of talent, so it's distributed over the lines. But I need to see the Schmaltzes, the Krauses, the, you know, the guys that we thought coming into the season, some of these more veteran guys that are going to make things happen. Um, I think it does help to have Bukestad back in the lineup. Which, by the way, the bumper effect of that was that Doan went down to the Tucson Roadrunners. And right. uh, the, the Andre Tourney, just in passing today in practice, said that you know he wants him to go down, get his confidence back, find his game back. He thought he had lost his confidence a little bit here in the last uh, little while. So, you know, I don't know. That's an interesting one for me. Um, there's plenty of forwards fighting for jobs right now. You know, Yamamoto is yeah. going to be in and out of the lineup. Spicy Tune is going to be in and out of the lineup. Um you know, it, who and, wants it? Who wants it? Show yeah. me. And of course, Yamamoto was, you know, was put on a waiver as over the week last weekend, right? He was sent, he, he was also sent back down um, to Tucson. So he's going to be in and out. Um, I kind of want to, I want to see more from Michael Carconi though, right? You know, for quite a while, you know, for, for a couple of seasons, he was the, the AHL's leading scorer. Let's see mm. more of that. <laughs> yeah. It'd been kind of quiet, right? Uh, we really hadn't, hadn't heard or seen much. Um, and you know, you kind of hope when let's say like a Michelli has a game like he had against San Jose, you hope that turns into a breakout game. Yes. You know, you hope that that's just the start and obviously not everybody carries that momentum. Sometimes it's just right place, right time to get hot in a game. Uh, but the way the goals were scored, and I'd like to go back to that because that was a positive for me. You talk about the 30 shots. So, Robin, let's go ahead and instead of making those 30 shots from the perimeter, from outside the hash marks, outside the faceoff dots, over by the wall, down by the goal line, let's put those in more high percentage chances. Let's put them in pucks filtered through from the D to generate rebounds or to slip through traffic as Sergachev's did. You know, let's let's let the forwards battle in front of the net and then have the D get those pucks through, get those shots through. Instead of looking for the perfect pass, the perfect play, dirty works. Good enough works. They just need to get that volume of shots, but I want to see the quality of the shots come up a bit too. Yeah, and and it I think to, to me, and I think a lot of that is as simple as um is keeping the keeping your feet moving, find you know, getting to the right spot. Um, but don't have you don't have to be too cute about it. You don't have to get you know like get in the perfect spot, but into into a high heat map area where you can get the most a good a good quality shot on. If you see the opportunity, you take it. Well, that's the other thing is I felt like they passed out of some scoring opportunities at times. We're less guilty of it in the Sharks game, but certainly we're more guilty of it in the previous three. Um, I don't know. And again, I mean, you know, we're talking about, all right, who's, who really wants to be in that lineup? Who wants to make that difference? Guys are going to slide up and down top six, middle six, bottom six. And the other thing, and I give Andre Torney credit for this, he does not mind shuffling the lines to try to catch a little oh, magic yeah. in game. He's like, you know what? Let's roll the dice. Let's, let's play the hunch. Let's see if I can put a couple guys together and see if they can catch a spark. So I like that. Uh, I mean, I, breaking, I, breaking up, you know, Keller Hayton and Schmaltz, I think is uh, worked out in the beginning of the game on against the sharks. Who to say we'll see more of that. Where do you stand on Clayton's Keller, Clay, Clayton Keller's season so far? Uh, I think he's been, I, I think to me, so to me, I think 
the best way I've uh, I can explain is fine. Like it's not, but not nothing like not not nothing that's right. Yeah, <laughs> nothing that it's not it's not great. Not like ooh, Clayton Keller is doing absolutely phenomenal, doing everything. But he's also, but he's not doing bad. He's doing good. It's just, but as as a newly minted captain, I want to see more. Here's here's my interesting take on Keller is that I think he has quietly been one of the better players, but he's also been one of the quieter players. Despite he's putting up points years ago, Robin. The way I would explain this is uh, Wayne Gretzky, one of his brothers, Keith was yeah. playing in the East Coast Hockey League with Fort Wayne Comets, storied historic franchise. I never remembered this guy touching the puck. At the end of the night, he had four assists, and I don't know how. Uh, I It's it's crazy. He's like almost you don't realize what he's doing out there. But after the hot start, six points in the first three games, it's calmed down a little bit. And so it was... Nothing against New Jersey, then one uh, point against Anaheim, point against Boston, nothing Ottawa, nothing Colorado, goal against the Kings, assist against the Sharks. So nice, consistent five, five, ten points, ten games. That looks good. Yeah. But to me, and also, by the way, plus two against San Jose, plus one against the Kings. So that's also very nice. But Colorado, here's like zeros across the board, but had five shots. So I like that and hasn't had less than two shots in a game. And that's only happened twice, but it has been averaging three shots for the most part in a game. And so I think for Clayton Keller, when we're talking about a guy leading by example and trying to get things going, it's weird how I'm not noticing him as much. But when I look at the numbers and then try to look at the impact, I think I feel like there's probably more here than than meets the yeah. eye from Keller. I just I wish I could somehow make it louder. You know yeah. what I mean? I wish I could magnify that for the players because for whatever reason, it's not resonating through the lineup right now. It's not. And I think that's kind of why, you know, why there's been that lineup shake, why he got separated from, you know, Hayton and Schmaltz. Yeah. I, I And yes, it's like, it's the uh, security blanket, right? You know, you're, it's what you're used to. It's comfortable. Um, sometimes you need to get, you know, shook out of that comfort zone a little bit. Yeah. And I think, like, I think, who is his line? Was he with was he with Gunther and uh in Cooley in that against the Sharks? I want to say that's what his line was, if I'm not mistaken. It was you know what I don't 100 percent know. Right. You might, I think I, you might be right. I think that's what it was. And I think I, I saw that and I was like, well, that's interesting. Let's see how this works out. Yeah, and maybe going for you. Well, uh, so here was the other thing, too talking about practice today um tourney was asked if the lines of practice uh on tuesday are the lines of the game on wednesday and his response was basically a shrug yeah <laughs> maybe I mean, maybe not we'll, we'll get we'll get a closer i mean a closer look i think when it comes when we get close to morning skate kind of will give us an idea what they might look like but yeah maybe maybe uh, not maybe. we'll see we'll see anyways we got more to get to you on this show we're gonna get to our picks of the game and then we're gonna ask we're gonna take a look a little bit at the pwhl they might be expanding soon are they gonna come out west we'll do that right after this And today's show is brought to you in part by FanDuel. Get ready to tackle the NFL action with FanDuel, America's number one sports book. Because right now, new customers can bet $5 and get $150 in bonus bets if you win. The FanDuel Sportsbook app gives you everything you need to place live bets on the NFL all in one place. So if you get a hunch in the middle of the game, you could check out the latest stats, view live play-by-play, -play, and so much more right on the same page where you place your bets. Just visit FanDuel.com to join today. You'll get started with $150 in bonus bets if you win your first $5 bet. That's FanDuel.com. Never waste a hunch and make every moment more with FanDuel, an official sportsbook partner of the NFL. So we talked the keys of the game, and now let's get to some picks for the game. Tom, as we bring up the FanDuel odds, you mentioned FanDuel, let's go ahead and bring up the FanDuel odds for today's game. Utah Hockey Club 
are favored by a point and a half at the mi- with the money line set at minus 134 in favor of Utah. Flames at plus 112. So uh, not as much of a tilt as like the Sharks game was supposed to be, uh, but still favored in this one, despite how everything went earlier this week. Well, I think, too, they're favored because the Flames aren't doing well either and just got shot out by Vegas. So somebody's got to be the favorite, I guess. Um, And again, playing at home, that matters, should matter. And this is the end of this two game quick little road swing for the Flames. So that matters. I understand why the line is where it is. Over under at six and a half. Oh, Robin, I stink at over unders. I just, <laughs> I cannot. I thought it was going to be the most scoring you... in the Sharks game. It, yeah, I know. I, I don't think I've been right yet on an over under. And I was going to pick the over on this game. Six and a half. I'm like, I know the Flames are just shut out, but Utah has been giving up a lot of goals. All of a sudden, Utah kind of found the offense a little bit again, and they changed the approach, which I liked, which I think should generate more goals for Utah. And I was going to go over. So, that said, it will be 0-0 into overtime, and it'll be one nothing in a shootout. That's probably how the game's going to go. Uh, I mean, it, at this point, I don't put it past. At this point, I don't put it past. Um, if I'm going to make a predict, like a like a prediction, I'm going to give it like a three to two, not two to one. Let me make it two to one, Utah. It's a low scoring game for me. Or 10 9. Could be 10 9. Who knows? Uh, Can you imagine yep. that'd be wild. I think that maybe, maybe whoever it is, they're just, they're just like, you know what? We need to prove these two, pe- these two, ro- <laughs> these two wrong because they're always trying to make predictions. Let's just make, let's just make them make their uh, prediction record go absolutely terrible. Oh my goodness. I'm not. I just I'm so bad with it, but oh, well, that's why we're out here trying. But uh, but we're still having having fun with it. Yeah. And I think if anybody says, oh, what did Tom do? I'm doing the opposite. You might be all right. There we go. But that's our picks of the game. Um, I I do, Tom, want to take a couple minutes on on this show because I want to do it before uh, everyone else, like before everyone else is talking about it. And by the time we get to it's too late. Um, But the PWHL. Um, for those that don't I know, or maybe aren't I've been following hockey for a whole lot. PW, it's the Professional Women's Hockey League uh, had its first season last year. Uh, looks like they're expanding and they're, they're looking to expand, exploring to expand to an extra two se- an extra two teams uh, starting in 2025-2026. Uh, so it'll coming up pretty soon. And it uh, looks like a lot there's a lot of discussion on what the cities might be. It looks like, oh, maybe they might do uh pittsburgh maybe they might do a bunch of quebec city um not a whole lot of discussion on what might could happen here on the west coast i think outside of seattle and and portland but tom let me get your opinion from you like what are the odds that we see the pwhl expand out here west maybe if not this next time around but very soon if they do i think they need to take a page of the american hockey league's book and set up a western division and have enough teams come in at the same time in the West where PWHL West, PWHL East might not even play each other regular season. Maybe not at first because that costs money. Mm -hmm. And maybe you shift like a Minnesota into the West. I don't know. uh, Just to give an established team in there, but you could, you easily could. And I think there's plenty of Canadian and American cities that would support it. Portland is an intriguing one. I think it would do well real well in a city like Portland. Uh, I would love to see it. Absolutely love to see it. I I love women's soccer. I love women's hockey. I love watching. Mm -hmm. Um, It's just, and I have a niece who is, you know, just a teenager now, and she is inspired by watching women in all walks of life Mm -hmm. do things that she has an interest in. And she's played hockey. She's played soccer. Uh, now she's a swimmer, you know, like it, it's just, they look forward to these things. And I think that it's important for the localization of those role models, especially, you know, a little girl looking up to, uh, a hockey player and saying, I want to be a hockey player. It's like, well, it's cool. If you want to be Connor McDavid, I mean, who doesn't. Right. Um, but you know, it's just thinking about how many kids are looking up to a Sarah nurse. 
you know, it's uh, it's really kind of a cool thing to know that you feel more represented yeah. in that way. And I, and and I, and, I, and I think that's the huge bit, right? And that's what we're seeing. We're seeing we saw we've and people have started to embrace it a lot more in the last decade, in the previous decade, and on the you know through the 2010s and even the two, early 2000s, women's sports didn't get enough traction and then didn't get enough credit. But now they're blowing up. Like, like take a look at the WNBA blowing up, the NWSL blowing up, PWHL uh, came out, you know, r- rose out of the ashes of the PHF and the uh, P- I forgot what the other uh, the W and it, whatever it was. There's like pro- the Professional Hockey Women's Professional Hockey Association Players Association, um, the WPHA or whatever. I think that's what they, that, it's what it was. Um, and they were like, "All right, let's 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 bring something. Let's put it together." And instantly, so much love in Minnesota, in Ottawa, in Toronto, in New York, and all the cities that they that they started in. Uh, so, like, if they bring it out west, I think that's huge. I said Seattle and Portland cities would be cool. I'd love to see maybe one somewhere in California. Um, I could see that. I could see one tucked in Colorado somewhere. There's plenty of places there. Maybe in you know Nevada, you could put a team, and um, you put a team in Utah. You know, there's there's plenty of places you could tuck a team in there that would give you a nice strong West Division. You could put a team in Winnipeg to give Minnesota a rivalry. I might be Calgary a little biased. And then, and then. I might be a little biased, but hey, let's see one in Arizona. They, look at the girls' hockey. Hey, there anyone, you go. If anyone. It, who are form, who are still leftover Coyotes fans listening to this? You know, you know what I'm talking about. The Kachina's girls hockey program here is amazing. It, it, they're absolutely amazing, and you know, despite now no NHL team in, in 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 Arizona, like they're still going strong. They're working as hard as they can to keep you know to keep things going to keep girls hockey alive. I think a PWHL team in the area would only do so much extra good for that city for phoenix for whatever it's tempe or whatever anywhere in this here in arizona it would be amazing it would so you know what robin if they're going to expand put in a whole western division i'm all for it i love it and uh, i would absolutely root on an entire western expansion of the pwhl no questions asked absolutely any final thoughts before we close things off you know what? I'm just going to go back to what I said earlier about number one, needing to see a great start out of Utah against Calgary and then a 60 minute effort. Uh, to me, this is this is effort based. Now, I'm not really concerned about the wins and losses on Wednesday and then on the road trip coming up. To me, it's all about effort. It's all about who wants to be in a lineup and it's all about who's going to be able to show me that they're taking the next step forward in their game. Absolutely. That sounds good. That's going to be it for everyone on this episode of the Locked On Utah Hockey Club podcast. If you like what you heard, don't forget to leave us a review, like, comment, subscribe if you have yet to already. We're available everywhere you get your podcasts, including on YouTube. Uh, if you are listening, also leave us maybe leave us an extra comment. Let us know, A, who you have winning this game, what's your final score prediction uh, for tonight's game against the Flames, and B, where would you like to see a PWHL team expand to? Would you like to see one uh, in Utah? Would you like to, Where else would you like to see one? Let us know. I'd, I'd like to get a, 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 a some insight from all you fans out there. Don't forget to interact with us also on social media. That we are on, uh, you know, social on on X, Instagram, Threads at lo underscore nhl utah. I am at robin underscore leonio. Tom Callahan is at Callahan on air. Interact with us. Ask a question you might have. We might answer right back or on a future episode of the Locked On Utah Hockey Club podcast. Thanks again to everyone once again for listening to today's episode. We'll see you guys next time.